Hello! So in this video I'm going to do some examples of derivations involving complex conditionals. So here we have our, uh, um, our argument and its conclusion is y. And we can use our show conk uh, shortcut for that. So we have y. Okay, let's bring in our premises. Premise 1, premise 2, premise 3, there is no premise 4. I'm going to delete this line. If you want to delete a line, uh, if you're whatever system you're on, if you right click, you'll get if you put the actually if you right click anywhere, you'll get this men you'll get different menus if you right click here or there, but either way you'll get a menu and uh, there'll be a delete line button and that if you press that that'll make it go away. And it turns out that if you're on a Windows uh, computer, if you hold down the alt key and also the delete key, it will make it go away. If you're on a Mac, then you need to hold down the function key and the alt key and then press delete. Uh, so I'll just delete it that way. And now we're back in our derivation. So, um, well, we are trying to move the derivation forward. Uh, the only rule we have is modus ponens, so we wanted to see if we can apply modus ponens. Uh, to apply modus ponens, we need a conditional. We only have one conditional. It's on line two. It's if z, then if x, then y. So what we want to look for is, is there anything we can do modus ponens with? There's that one conditional. What do we need for modus ponens? Well, we need its antecedent. So what is its antecedent? Z. So we need to ask, okay, I've got if z, then if x, then y on line 1. Do I have z anywhere? And if we look at line 3, line 3 is not z, but hey, line 4 is z. So we can say 2, 4, modus ponens, because we have a conditional on line 2, and its antecedent on line 4. What we're going to get when we apply modus ponens is the consequent, and the consequent is if x, then y. Okay, good. So now we want to see if we can use if x, then y. Well, if x and y is a conditional, so one thing we can do with it is modus ponens. We need to do modus ponens with it. We need to find its antecedent. So we want to look at what is its antecedent. Its antecedent is x. Okay, so we want to ask ourselves, can we find x anywhere? And indeed we can. We can find it on line 3. So we have a conditional on line 5. We have its antecedent on line 3. So we can say 3, 5, modus ponens, and we get y. What can we do with y? y is our conclusion. So we're done. We can say 6, direct derivation. So this is fairly straightforward. It's like the derivations we've been doing before, except that um, we, when we applied modus ponens to line 2, we got a new conditional. So then in, we had to then say, OK, can I make that new conditional interact with any of my old stuff? And yes, we were able to make that new conditional interact with some of our old stuff, namely x on line 3. OK, but it's the same thing, just can I apply modus ponens with m using my new line? OK, let's look at another example. OK, so again, we will put in our conclusion, and we will put in our premises, of which there are, oh, there are only two. OK. So again, uh, we, our only rule is modus ponens, so that's what we want to see if we can use. Well, we have a conditional on line 2, and we have a conditional on line 3. So if we were going to do modus ponens uh, with 3, one thing we might say is, hmm, well, do I, uh, maybe that will be the conditional premise, and then I'll get its antecedent. So I'd knew it, I would need x, right? The antecedent of line 3 is x. That's what you need for modus ponens with line 3. Is x anywhere by itself? No, there's no x by itself anywhere, so we cannot do modus ponens with line 3 and x. Okay, well that's unfortunate. Let's look at line 2. Well, line 2 is also a conditional, so we can do modus ponens with line 2 if we can get its antecedent. So what is the antecedent of line 2? Well, it's if x then z. And hey, that's what I have on line 3. So actually, I can do modus ponens using 3, but, this, but it's because 3 is the antecedent of some other conditional, right? We don't have the antecedent of line 3, so we can't do if x then z and x, but we do have a conditional uh, on another line, and 3 is the antecedent of that conditional. So we can say 2, 3, m, p, and we get the consequent of uh, line 2, and we get y. And there's, a really o there's only one way modus ponens can be applied here, because um, we have a bit, we have a conditional, and we have its antecedent. And so the only thing we can get is the consequent of that conditional that we ha also have the antecedent of. So good, we have a big conditional on line 2, a smaller conditional on line 3. The smaller conditional on line 3 is the antecedent of line 2. When we apply modus ponens, we get the consequent of line 2, which is y. Can we do anything with y? Indeed we can. y is what we are trying to show. y is the conclusion. And so we can box and cancel with direct derivation. Okay, good. 
Let's look at another one. Okay, so again, we'll say show conclusion. Let's put in our premises, and there are three of them. Okay, standard thing. We're looking to apply modus ponens, so we're looking for our conditionals. So we look at line 3, and we say, okay, line 3 is a conditional, and what is the antecedent of line 3? The antecedent of line 3 is if z, then y. It's z only if y. It's z arrow y. Okay. So if we're going to do modus ponens with 3 right, right now, we need z arrow y. Do we have z arrow y anywhere by itself? No. So we're not doing modus ponens with line 3 right now. We might later, but not right now. Okay. Are there conditionals on line 4? So we want to say, okay, uh, can we do modus ponens with it? Well, the question is, do we have the consequent of line 4? Well, what is the consequent of line 4? The consequent of line 4 is x. Okay, so that's what I need to do. If I'm going to do modus ponens with line 4, I want to get x. Do I have x? Hey, we do. That's what we have on line 2. So we can do modus ponens with 2 and 4. We have a conditional on line 4, and we have the antecedent of that conditional on line 2. So we say 2, 4, m, p. M, p. Okay, we have a new conditional, if z, then y. So we want to do something with if z, then y. One thing we can do is say, well, let me get its antecedent, and I'll do modus ponens with it. Okay, so, well, the antecedent of line 5 is z. Do we have z anywhere? We don't. So, uh, we're not going to do modus ponens with 5 as our conditional, and then the antecedent of it somewhere else. At least not yet. Maybe we will later. We don't know, but not right now. Okay, well, but we do have one other line still we haven't used. The other, so line 5 we haven't used, and also line 3 we haven't used. So if we look at line 3, we remember, okay, it's a conditional 2. What is its antecedent? Its antecedent is if z, then y. So if we have if z, then y, we can say 3, and then wherever if z, then y is modus ponens with that. And we do have if z, then y. That's what we just got on line 5, right? If we look at line 3 and we look at line 5, we can say, aha, 5 is the antecedent of line 3. 3 is a conditional, 5 is its antecedent. If you have a conditional and its antecedent, you can apply modus ponens, so we can say 3, 5, m, p, and what do we get? We get z, which is the consequent of line 3. What can we do with z? We can box and cancel because it's our conclusion. So we can say 6, direct derivation. So this problem is kind of like a combination of the previous two problems. We did uh, one modus ponens where we had the, um, uh, the simple antecedent, and as our and that was our premise, uh, our other premise was the simple antecedent with an atomic sentence, and then we said okay, then we did another modus ponens with these two lines where uh, the antecedent was complex, and then we got to z. So w sometimes we'll have to do some of both. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to do one more video with some more of these problems. They get a little bit trickier, so you are going to watch want to watch that video as well.